the 2018 model year Subaru Outback range has landed in Australia, bringing in some styling tweaks, advances in technology, and refinements to the powertrain and suspension. Visually, the new model differs with a redesigned front grille and bumper bar, with fresh headlights installed, and shorter stemmed side mirrors compared with the outgoing model. There's also restyled alloy wheels for a spruced up look, measuring 17 inches on the 2.0D and 18 on all other variants. Crimson red pear and wilderness green metallic paint options have also been added. In terms of the hardware underneath, Subaru says the 2.5-liter engine has been refined for improved response and efficiency, while the suspension and transmission have come in for some minor tweaks to assist with driving pleasure. For the interior Subaru has fit a larger 8.0-inch head unit for the 2.5i premium variant and above, with improved usability. A larger center dash panel has a classy flat face, Subaru says, which gives off the impression of a tablet device. Two additional USB ports are placed in the back of the center console to keep rear passengers happy and their devices charged, and there's a new steering wheel for the driver, plus instrument panel stitching for a more premium look. Subaru Australia Managing Director Colin Christie spoke of the update, saying, Outback sold 11,340 in 2017 and has been a consistent bestseller for us in the current generation, so we think the latest long list of refinements will only add to its appeal in the SUV space. The upgrades across every key area underline our commitment to value for our customers, together with the durability, engineering and, of course, safety, for which Subaru is renowned. Lastly. Safety has been improved thanks to an expanded recognition of the onboard EyeSight Active Cruise Control, with enhanced pedestrian detection and pre-collision autonomous braking, and there's now a side view camera and front view camera system on offer. The 2018 Subaru Outback range is now on sale in Australia, all fitted with a CVT automatic as standard. Some of the legacy automakers have suggested that they consider car buyers to fall into two categories, regular car buyers and electric car buyers. This idea is one of the main reasons that sales of their EVs have been disappointing. Tesla has never subscribed to any such self-sabotaging view of the market. From the very beginning, Elon Musk and his disciples understood that, for an EV to have a chance in the market, it wouldn't just need to be as good as a gas vehicle, it would need to be better in every way. Tesla set out to build not the best electric cars, but the best cars, and the results have proven the soundness of that strategy. When Model 3 hits its stride, it's going to be stealing sales from existing small performance sedans. One popular model that's directly in the crosshairs is the BMW 3 Series, which is famous for its excellent driving qualities. Several media outlets have contrasted the specs of the old favorite and the new upstart, X-Auto and the BMW blog have each published detailed spec-by-spec -spec comparisons, but how do the two cars compare in the more subjective area of how they handle on the road? A good man to answer that question might be expert BMW driver Alex McCulloch, who recently had a chance to take some hot laps in a Model 3, and offered his assessment in a post on the BMW Car Club of America's website. McCulloch, who is one of those professional drivers on close course was called for a gig driving a Model 3 for a short film promoting a very good cause. Like a pro, he offered few details about the client or the production, saying only that it was a full day of filming at multiple locations in the Colorado Rockies, including static, aerial, drive-by, and vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle shots. As most reviewers have, McCulloch found Model 3's lack of traditional controls a bit strange at first, but he adjusted quickly, and was soon putting the new Tesla through its paces. He writes, Despite my lack of seat time in the car, it did what I asked with ease. It was communicative, composed, and surprisingly neutral, 
despite my not being able to figure out how to defeat the stability control. McCulloch continues, there was only faint road noise, because, unlike our BMW X3 camera vehicle, this car consumed only ions. More accurately, it transformed them from a giant lithium-ion battery pack beneath my seat to instant rear-wheel drive torque. And speaking of torque, there was enough on tap to power a Washington DC Metro train. This small rimmed leather sport steering wheel was connected to delightfully crisp and direct steering. McCulloch's love of BMWs didn't prevent him from appreciating Model 3, in fact, it sounds as if he found the driving experience to be broadly similar to that of a high-end BMW. He said, the steering, brakes, and balance were all on par with my expectations of a sports sedan, think E46 M3. McCulloch's conclusion, this car is a game-changer. It will be relatively attainable compared to its predecessors, and it was even able to satisfy the driving bias of an old-school BMW lover like me. I really didn't want to like it, but I found little to complain about. It was an intersection of the past and the future, one where an old-school driving enthusiast like me could experience what is clearly the future, and not have to relinquish the experience that I hold dear. The latest version of the world's best-selling electric vehicle is to be sold in New Zealand. Japanese manufacturer Nissan has announced plans to sell the LEAF EV in seven markets in Asia and Oceania during the next fiscal year, including New Zealand and Australia. The LEAF is the world's most popular EV, with more than 300,000 of them sold globally since the first-generation model first went on sale in 2010. It is the icon of what Nissan calls intelligent mobility, which is the company's approach to changing how cars are powered, driven and integrated into society. An announcement that the new second generation will be launched in Australia, Hong Kong, Malaysia, New Zealand, Singapore, South Korea and Thailand was made at an event called Nissan Futures, a gathering in Singapore of industry leaders, government officials and media from across Asia and Oceania. Nissan's regional senior vice president Yutaka Sonata said the company is working to bring the new generation LEAF to as many markets as possible. He said, the new LEAF is the most advanced yet accessible 100% electric vehicle on the planet. The launch in so many markets shows our commitment to playing a leading role in electrification in this dynamic region, and to delivering the future of mobility to the region now. Arrival of the new LEAF, and it has yet to be confirmed when that will happen and what prices might be, will represent a second attempt to sell the Nissan as a new vehicle in New Zealand. Nissan NZ pulled the plug on the first-generation version in early 2016 when it failed to sell, primarily because of its high purchase price, even though it had eventually been offered for just under $40,000. However good sales of used Leafs imported from Japan and the UK, they typically sell for around $20,000, have made the model the most popular EV in this country. The second-generation model was launched during the second half of last year, and deliveries begin in Japan in October, followed by USA and Canada in January and Europe this month. The car's new electric powertrain delivers 110 kilowatts of power and 320 newton meters of torque, and a major improvement is that whereas the first-generation version had a range of up to 130 kilometers on a single charge, the new model has a range of up to 400 kilometers depending on the size of the battery pack. Meanwhile, the Nissan Futures event has been told that latest research has shown one in three Southeast Asian consumers planning to buy a new car are open to purchasing an electric vehicle. With the right incentives, the region can accelerate adoption of electric and electrified vehicles. The Nissan Commission study by market intelligence firm Frost & Sullivan has shown. The study results also show that contrary to common perception, cost is not considered a deterrent to purchase of an EV, in fact, 
customers surveyed were willing to pay more to own an electric vehicle. However, the study also shows that lower costs would prompt more people to consider electric cars. Three quarters of respondents said they were ready to switch to electric vehicles if taxes were waived. Other incentives that would sway customers include installation of charging stations in apartment buildings, 70%, priority lanes for electric vehicles, 56%, and free parking, 53%.